I think there's no doubt that the, the, the so-called fact checkers, I mean, they're mostly just in many cases paid Democrat operatives, but uh, just the legions of Democrat operatives. I mean, the media wants to be, the liberal media want to be the gatekeepers for speech in this country, which you can or cannot say that's acceptable speech. And what we found is the American people don't want them to be the gatekeepers. They want them, the media, just to report on the facts, tell us what is actually happening, and let the American people draw their own conclusions. But that's not what the left-wing media wants. And the media doesn't like the, the, the power that, uh, that the American people have now to choose among different media outlets. They don't like the proliferation of different voices. They want to control it all themselves. This is why they love the power of big tech. Like many conservatives, Josh Hawley is very upset about big tech censorship and somehow seems to think that fact checkers and social media websites are biased against conservatives. In fact, there are many instances of right wingers going out of their way to claim that, that big tech is censoring them. In fact, I, I think the trend is clear that you, you almost always censor, meaning uh, and when I use the word censor here, I, 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 meaning, uh, I, I mean block content, fact check, uh, or label content, or uh, demonetize websites of conservative, Republican, or pro-life individuals, or groups, or companies. But is this true? I mean, the reality is that Facebook literally decided to have the Daily Caller as one of their fact checkers. And Mark Zuckerberg himself held a private meeting with a bunch of right-wing pundits just to have a little discussion about how they could get their message across, complaining about Facebook not promoting their content enough. Now the reality is these social media websites do have a certain degree of bias, as well as a lot of the fact checkers. I mean, remember when Bernie Sanders was running for office and fact checkers would go out of their way to try to make it seem like what Bernie Sanders was saying was false? The Washington Post has been fact checking presidential candidates on the campaign trail, thank goodness, right? Until now. Uh, Bernie Sanders made a statement that they've decided to take a look at, all right? I'm going to read you what he said. He said, millions of Americans are forced to work two or three jobs just to survive. Mm. This seems true, right? right? So yeah. they have come out and not said that it's not true, but just that it's misleading. <laughs> uh, let me, I guess, break well, that down That's fascinating. For you. They must have a good reason they for that. They must have a good reason, right? Okay. okay. So, uh, but most of those extra jobs are part-time, not full-time. Oh, that, so as they long don't as count. you work two 20-hour jobs <laughs> yeah. in two different places, because that's easy to do. Unless you literally don't sleep right. a wink at night and have to work, right. you know, literally around the clock, then it doesn't yeah. actually count in the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Right. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of these big tech companies and these news outlets have a bias. There's no question there. But the bias is in favor of giant corporations because these media companies are owned by giant corporations. It's pretty predictable if you really think about it. And any type of objective analysis that's been done has not been able to show any type of bias against right-wingers. In fact, most analyses find that social media websites tend to artificially promote right-wing content, mainly because people get so outraged both Republicans themselves are outraged about any random thing, and people get outraged at the horrible thing Republicans do on a regular basis. But that outrage leads to right-wingers consistently dominating presence on social media. They always seem to be a topic of conversation. And why is this? Because these social media platforms prefer that people are outraged. Because outrage, for whatever reason, gets people more engaged with the content. Now, one country stands out in this instance, though, and that's Germany. See, because Germany bans outright fascist propaganda, a lot of the mainstream right has a difficult time spreading their dog whistles around, and so that does reduce the amount of presence. But that's only in one country on Twitter where that analysis was, which is very revealing in that fact that there's so much overlap between literal outright fascists and the mainstream right in the United States and other countries. Additionally, there are actually politicians in Europe that are having to move to the right just to match what is happening on social media. The outrage economy on social media has led to a huge surge in right-wing activity online. So everything they say about these big tank companies having a left wing bias is completely ridiculous. This is just these conservatives complaining to the refs when it's already skewed in their favor. So why do so many conservatives complain about censorship on the internet? Well, the answer is really clear. And the answer is the type of censorship that I think we all actually can agree with. You know, it's a pretty low bar to say that people shouldn't be saying things like the n-word randomly on the internet all the time. 
I certainly wouldn't want to be on a platform where people are allowed to be violently racist on a regular basis. I actually prefer to keep my newsfeed clear of those racists. And so when right-wingers call for violence and use slurs and say all the horrible things that they say in person, Facebook and other platforms predictably take their content down. The reason for that being very, very simple, that these websites don't want to expose themselves to any liability for not moderating their content. It turns out that if you let people plan and do violent things on your website, that your website can potentially face some legal ramifications there. And so what these right-wingers are saying is censorship really is just baseline standards of decency that they keep running into. And that's why no matter how skewed in favor of these right-wingers, right-wingers will always view social media websites as a barrier to their ideas. Because I think at the end of the day, we all know that right-wingers have slurs on the tip of their tongues at every moment. And any time they're not allowed to say them, you can bet they're gonna cry about it. This is Ben Carolla with Rebel Headquarters. You can catch my show Galaxy Brain on the Young Turks Twitch channel every Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to stay up to date with my content.